Hello, today we're going to be going over the Shadow Cruiser. It is a 257 MKS, and we are going to be starting right up front here uh, with the tongue jack. The tongue jack here is uh, going to allow you to level front to back, but it also allows you to get on and off the tow vehicle. I do like to recommend that while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle to make sure you're level from side to side first. They have a little stick on levels you can stick on the side of the coach, or you use a carpenter's level right inside the doorway. But you may have to put a pad down or blocks on one side or the other, use that tow vehicle to roll onto them. This makes it a lot easier. Once you have done that, then you unhook from the tow vehicle, pull it forward, finish leveling front to back with this guy, and then you'll lower your stabilizer jacks. Nice thing about these guys, these guys are located on a switch. You got a switch here for the front stabilizers and a switch in the back for the rear. Go ahead and show you that real quick here. Pretty much extend and retract. And you're just looking for these guys to hit the ground. You'll even hear that motor start to bog out. When that happens, it's saying, hey, I can't really give you much more than this. And you want to stop. Our other switch on this guy is just a light. So if you had to hook up at night, it gives you something to somewhat be able to see. And then there is an option for a manual crank just by pulling this piece up. Next, we're going to have our two 20-pound tanks. These guys are both full, minus what was used to test the propane system with. But then we got this guy up here. This guy here is our regulator. And this uh, knob up here will tell you what tank you're using and even tells you supply. So right now we're pointing at this tank, but these guys are not on. So this little window here is reading red, showing you the tank, basically saying your tank is empty because it isn't sensing propane. I'm gonna turn this guy on, give him just a second there. And as you see, it will flip the green, showing us that we have propane flow. When that tank is empty, all you got to do is just come out here, turn it to the other side, and turn this one off. Then you can take the other one off and go get it refilled. Back behind here is where our battery is located, just a 24 series deep cycle marine RV style battery. You do have two cap lights on the front of the coach. Uh, these guys are operated by a switch on the inside at the control panel, and I'll show you that once we have stepped inside. All right, as we come over to the side here, first you're going to have an option to where you can have a quick plug and play solar panel that would just sit on the ground. There is a motion sensor light located inside here. Underneath here is where your switch is. You got a one hash mark, a circle, and a two hash mark. The one hash mark, the light will continuously stay on. The two hash mark is the motion sensor setting. So basically that light would pop on anytime you go to open this door. It's a nice little feature. This guy here is the manual crank for that tongue jack I was just telling you about. You do have a quick connect sprayer that gets connected on the other side. I'll show you that where, when we get to the other side. And it's got a sprayer in as well. Got the manual crank for some reason the slide motor isn't working you still have a way to operate the slide room to bring it in and then our other crank here is so that you have a way to operate your uh, stabilizer jacks so if for some reason the motors ain't working or the switch ain't working you still have a way to operate those guys and then you got this nice little storage compartment thing in here and i'm going to show you that when we get to the other side because it actually can roll up and out and then this guy here is on a magnet so it'll just lay down but you can't lay it down right now our hitch is in the way on the other side all right, as we move down, you do have a spray port here as well, that quick connect spray port. I may have told you it was on the other side. I apologize for that. Too many trailers the last few weeks. <laughs> uh, next, we got our cable and satellite hookup. Uh, pretty much if you have a, a dome, you're gonna hook up to the satellite side. For the cable, that's generally for uh, the campgrounds. If you have a campground cable, uh, you do have to turn off the TV antenna booster uh, to pick up those channels. And I'll show you how to do that once we have stepped inside. Next, we got the city water hookup. With this guy, I do always recommend that you have a pressure regulator on the water spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter and then your blue or white water drinking hose. From there, you'll hook up to this guy. You'll be ready to use the cold side right away. You do have to wait for the water heater to fill before you can get water coming through to your hot side. Down below that is where your black tank flush is located. Okay, this guy is basically a sprayer inside the black tank, sprays around, gets all the nastiness out. I always do recommend when you go to do this guy that you do want to have a pressure regulator on the spigot as well. The reason for that is behind here is a plastic check valve. From there, you're going to go out and get yourself a black hose, black tank, black hose. It keeps it simple. Okay. Before you turn on your water to start doing the flush, that's what this caution sticker here is for. You do have to make sure that you would pull this black handle outward to make sure that the valve is open when you start doing that flush, especially if your tank is full. If the tank is already full, you start adding water to it, 
that's only going to come out of one or two places, either the toilet, and if there's a good seal on the toilet, it's going to come out of the vent stack on the roof. Both situations will be bad, okay? When you got to hook, you know, when you got to do your flush, do make sure your sewer hose is all hooked up. It does come with a clear elbow. So, and that goes into the ground. Once you are done doing your flush, you're going to shut off the water, unhook your hose from the spigot. So it allows that water to drain out because there is a hose on the back side of this that's attached to that check valve, but you don't know how long that guy is. There is no pressure to push that water through that check valve. So that water's got to come out somehow. From there, you're going to close your black tank and then you're going to open your grays. You are your gray here and you do have a secondary gray back here. This one up front here is going to be your bathroom sink and shower. And then your other one back here is just your, uh, just your kitchen sink. We'll talk about our tires and lug nuts once we get to the other side so we can see them a little easier. Uh, right here is where you're going to hook up your power cord. It is a 30 amp power cord. It does come with the coach. You are able to store your sewer hose in the bumper. This guy just pops right off. The only thing that does not fit in there is that clear elbow. I always recommend get yourself a nice jug, plastic jug of ice cream. Yes, we're going to have a good time eating that ice cream. Or if we're depressed, we're still going to eat the ice cream. But from there, you'll have that that container to where you can actually store that elbow in there so it doesn't roll around and get anything nasty. It is pre-wired for an observational backup camera. We also do have an aftermarket ladder mount that was installed. We got our spare tire. And as we come around the other side, we're gonna have our switch here for the rear stabilizer jacks. Once again, to extend and retract. We do have our outside speakers on at this time. The radio station is actually letting us listen to the Cardinals baseball game, which is nice, although they're not having a very impressive season. But we still root for them. Uh, we'll come back and talk about go our cards. door and our steps here in just a minute. I heard that. I said go cards. Uh-huh. Okay. I did. Oh, yeah, you are. The... Yeah, the other half's the Cubs fan. The other half's the Cubs fan. We don't Boo. talk about that. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> All right, so next we're going to have the water heater. This is gas and electric option. Uh, whenever you do go to drain this guy, you do want to make sure you relieve the pressure by pulling this guy upward. And you're going to remove this cap down here. This is a fit one and a one and one sixteenth socket to remove this guy. And I'll show you how the gas and electric option works once we have stepped inside. Those are on your control panel. Next, we got our fresh water fill. This guy is gravity fed. Uh, so you stick the hose in and let it fill. You do want to read the monitor panel inside so that you know when it reads full to shut off the water. When you go to drain this guy, it's going to be located down here behind the tire. Right, or in between, yeah, behind the tire. It's going to be your blue one right there. You just open that valve and it'll start draining that tank. While we're also down here, you got these uh, red and blue lines right here. These are the low point drains. These guys are the lowest points to the water lines inside the coach. I do always like to recommend that you do want to get all the water out of the coach when you're done camping, so you need to remove that cap. I always recommend open up those valves, open up a faucet. As you go home, air is going to blow through those lines and push any excess water out, so you wouldn't have any water left in those lines that could become st potentially stagnant or bad. Those lines are also used when you go to winterize your coach, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when, once we have stepped inside. You do have an outside 110 that is GFCI protected. And then as you see, you got a couple of notice and attention driver stickers here. This is to make sure that you periodically check your lug nuts. This sticker here is what I like to call our over aggressive sticker. This thing wants you to check your lug nuts at 10, 25 and 50 miles. Okay, I always do like to recommend that you do want to check them usually around 50, 100 and 200 miles. <clears throat> Another thing that you can also note is that when we usually leave the campground, the first place we're usually going to stop is the gas station to refuel. While we're refueling, we can check these lug nuts. We're knocking out two birds with one stone, okay? You also do want to keep these tires topped off to their max PSI level. These guys are 65 PSI, okay? With the lug nuts, they are torqued to 100 foot-pounds. You got your vent for the stove. You always wanna make sure that guy is open when you're going to cook. Uh, if that guy is not open on the inside there, when you turn your fan on, it isn't doing its job properly. Next, we got our furnace. You got your intake and exhaust. 
Uh, we always do like to recommend that you have mud dauber screens on here. Uh, as you see, there is already one on here that's nice. It helps keep the wasps and the mud daubers out of there from building nests that can create potential issues. The shop rates are not cheap at this mo at this time. All right, so we have our other there, our secondary door here. This guy here. Our cleaner likes to lock our deadbolts on me. This guy here is just to the bedroom, and we'll see a little more about that once we have stepped inside. With your steps here, these guys are pretty simple. These guys will just fold and go to fold and then lift and push in. Real easy. I'm going to leave them in there because we ain't got to come back out this guy. And then we're on our other side here where's the rest of our customer's hitch here. We do have another one of these motion sensor lights. You know, like I said, this guy here will actually roll up and out. So you're able to grab some of these items that you store in there. And then this guy here just folds down to close. Nice thing is your camper is a key to light camper. So your keys here operates all locks on your camper. Very good feature. All right, as we come back to our main entry door here, one thing that we do always have to note is when we're going to be operating our steps, you do have to make sure that this door is open all the way. A little push to our other camera there, so we gotta watch out for that guy. So basically this guy will lock in position right behind there, and then these guys here are so you're able to adjust your feet. A lot of times people will have these all the way in, and then we'll pull it out and just adjust the foot. I'm gonna bring that guy down because we gotta bring it back out. The reason for that is, is that you want to try to keep this guy here as flat with the threshold as possible. Too much of an elevation on this can cause issues to both the screen door and the entry door if you are not careful. One other thing is, is that if you're using your screen door, because it's a nice day, you do want to make sure if you're using the gas option on your water heater here that you're not blocking this orifice so that it can properly breathe. All right, basically before we step inside, since it's a little easier to show you, right here is where our control panel is going to be located. So up here it's going to tell you your tank statuses and also the status of your battery. I do still have a little water in that fresh tank. Black's empty. I think we had a little bit of gray from testing the water systems. And our auxiliary, which is going to be the kitchen sink. We got the water pump. You're only using the water pump if you're using the fresh water tank. If you're hooked to city water, you do not need that guy. And then from here is going to be the gas option for your water heater. You got your interior lights. And then this other auxiliary switch, I even got a sticker here. It tells you it's for the electric side of your hot water heater. Both can be used at the same time, or if you want to use one instead of the other, by all means do so. Uh, you're obviously easily paying for the electric at the campsite already, so try to use the electric side. Then you got those cap lights I showed you. You got your awning lights. It's actually really nice, pretty, and blue. And then this auxiliary right down here is actually going to be a blue light that lights up the step area, so if you guys come home at night, you're able to see. And then our little switch here is going to be our battery disconnect. So when you are storing the camper, you want to have this guy in that off position so that way if something was left on, it will not drain your battery. And then right here is going to be our fire extinguisher right near the entry door. All right, as we step inside, you are going to have an outlet right here that is GFCI protected. Then down here is going to be your LP slash carbon monoxide detector. You do want to test this guy every 9 to 14 days, and by simply pushing this button right here, you're going to be performing the test. And it will all let off a different set of beeps. If you are wearing headphones while watching this video, I apologize if I just hurt your eardrums. Uh, these guys here do have a life expectancy of 7 to 10 years, and the nice thing about this model here is it actually has the uh, expiration date right on the front here. I have seen these guys go out within that time frame as well, though, or before that time frame. You 
do have a closet here as well, and we'll get back to that side in a moment. Uh, we're going to have our kitchen area where you got your sink, your office is hot and cold water. You do have a light here and another USB outlet, right? Or USB, I'm sorry. GFCI protected outlet. More storage up above. We have the microwave. The microwave is pretty self explanatory. We do like to say set the time though. If you guys go out somewhere and you come back, you see the time is not set on the microwave. That means there was a power failure at the campsite. And you would want to look into that and see if that was from either the campsite itself or from the electric company. Okay, then next we're going to have the stove. <clears throat> so with the stove, whenever you go to light this guy, you're going to turn it to the flame icon and then turn this guy. All right, this guy's not going to stay lit for only about 8 to 10 seconds because I turned off the propane and it's going to basically go out. Uh, but basically, <clears throat> as you see, it's nice because it even lights it up. There it goes. Uh, it lights up this to let you know that the knob's been turned on, so that's actually a really nice feature about these guys. Your spark igniter over here will also light your oven. Same concept, you're going to turn it to the flame icon, but you got to push and hold it in while you spark ignite it. Once it's been lit, you hold that in for about 7 to 10 seconds and then set your temperature. Next, we got more drawers here on the side. We got some storage underneath here, but I do have, there's a couple of compartments that's taken off at this time. Uh, this guy here is going to go to this panel underneath, and then <clears throat> this larger panel goes down below. I'm pretty sure it was below. Yeah. I believe, though, the customers left it out so they can have a little more storage space because it kind of goes in there at a caddy dangle, so it kind of eliminates it. Oh, nope, nope. It will go in there long ways. All right. The reason why that is off, though, this is where we're going to go to winterize our coach. So you, when you go to winterize, you have to bypass the water heater. So there's going to be two valves right there to bypass that water heater. Right now, they're in line with the water heater so that water will go in and come out. When you go to winterize, you're going to turn those valves so they're in line with the white hose so that the antifreeze will still winterize your hot line without going into the water heater. Then our other panel here, and I did forget to grab my flashlight, is where you're going to turn the valve back there in the back. It might be a little difficult to see because it is a little darker in there. But you turn that valve and you're going to use this hose right here that will go into your jugs and antifreeze. And then you use the water pump to winterize your unit. Basically what you want to do is open up those low point drains. From there go through, open up all your faucets, hot side first, then cold for just a few seconds to help kind of relieve that pressure and that water to drain out. You're going to do that to every faucet, including that outside quick connect spray port. And then from there, <clears throat> you'll close those lines and then turn on your pump to winterize. Go through, start with, once again, hot side first. Make sure you got pink coming through and then cold. All right. Next, we're going to have the 12 volt fridge. Uh, to turn this guy on and off, you got your power switch up here. You just press and hold this to turn it on and off. Just a second. So I do like to go fast for the system sometimes. So from there you got your plus and minus, you're able to adjust the temperature. Right now this light is on the freezer section. So if I wanted to adjust the freezer, I can. Or if I wanted to adjust the fridge, which usually you turn it on four or five to get it good and cold, and then usually three, depending on the temperature outside, is usually pretty sufficient. And then you have this what they call a nighttime mode. So usually it's cooler at night, so it doesn't have to work as hard. So it kind of, it causes it, it's, it basically it lets it not run as hard. So it's not pulling as much power. Then down below is going to be our fuse panel box. Basically everything inside here that runs off sure power or has to be plugged into your main power source is going to be on your breakers. And they do have everything labeled right here for you, what they are. And then everything that operates off your battery is going to be on the fuses and right here they're labeled as well what they all are nice thing is it looks like they're all 15s uh this 20 down here is going to be for your slide room i believe oh nope, no nope, refrigerator and then these 240s are for the converter what those are meant for is so if that a lot of people will usually in the winter time when they store the camper they just unhook their battery well if for some reason the battery gets hooked up backwards it'll blow those fuses instead of causing damage to the converter Next, we're going to have our thermostat here. Uh, we're going to start in the off position. 
So I'll give this just a second. So once again, I don't go too fast for the system. You're gonna push your little space bar, lights up this little light it up first. Then you got fan low and fan high, and that's just gonna be the fan on the air conditioner. From there, you got cool high and cool low. And these two settings right here, the air conditioner will just continuously run and it will not shut off to the desired temp that you have it set to. From there, you got cool low auto and cool high auto, and that's when it would shut on and off to your desired temp. And you just set that temperature by your up and down arrows. And then your last option is gonna be heat, which is uh, ran by propane only. Uh, so <clears throat> we gotta make sure your propane is on when you go to use that guy. I'm gonna turn that guy back on because it is warm outside today. Yes, today is a very warm day. All right. Next, we'll step into the bathroom area. You got storage cabinets here and below. You got your GFCI outlet right here, and this is the receptacle to where if those outlets are not working, come and make sure this guy has not been tripped. Then we got our medicine cabinet, sink, storage underneath as well. And then behind our door here, as we squeeze around, we're gonna have the bat, uh, pretty much your toilet. So with the toilet, you would always add a little bit of water or pressing the pedal lightly to add water so you can do your business. All the way down, it's gonna flush. But you do always wanna to try to leave some water in there so that seal doesn't get dry rotted or brittle. If, the, if that, When that happens and the smell can start to come through and we just don't want that. Uh, nice thing you can also do is if you spray the bowl of the toilet with nonstick cook spray, it uh, helps everything slide down easier, makes it easier to clean for the cleaner. Uh, I just always recommend don't get kitchen pan confused with bathroom pan. Just unsanitary. Then we got our shower, um, the hot and cold water, and then you got your shower head. It looks like they uh, did an aftermarket shower head. It's a little nicer, uh, but there's a button on there. What that does is it reduces the flow of water so you can try to get the most out of your hot water heater. Your hot water heater is only six gallons. All right, the average American uses 38 gallons of hot water alone when they take a shower. So you're just outmatched. Uh, that just that reducer will help you get the most out of it. And then this guy here just slides the lock into place. I always do that for like an elbow test if we're scrubbing and pump our elbows on it. Uh, basically, when you go to open this guy, you're gonna pull forward a little bit, pour it towards you from the inside, and then help guide it back. If you let this guy swing <laughs> back too fast over time, it can cause, cause damage to the interior springs inside. And then we got our vent fan up here. You just open, turn her on. And they already got the nice vent covers on there. All right, so then when we step into the bedroom area, you do got your closet space right behind me here and drawers underneath. Uh, our door, there's 110 outlets on each side. And then your guy here is actually, let me try to see if I can do it. Or did she lock me? I think it's on this side. It glides, and I think my cleaner locked it up on me. There is a lock. Oh, it's on this side. Okay. So over here, there is a lock to lock it into place, but if you just pull it and unlock it, this actually will slide one way or the other. This guy does not lift up, but you do have storage underneath it as well. Basically, it doesn't lift because it glides on a track on the front on the front one. Then you got more little closet storage space on each side as well. You got two individual reader lights on each side, and then you got storage up above as well. And then on our wall over here, we're gonna have our <clears throat> where we would mount for our TV. Obviously, we're not trying to mount our TV bracket that close to the ceiling because you would not be able to put the TV up. Uh, but generally, in this area, you're not going to go no larger than probably a 24, to be honest with you, a 24-inch TV. And then our window there is a fire exit window. Uh, basically, if you had to get out, that window is on a hinge. So the whole window would just fling out so you can get out. Then that tab there is designed so you can try to pull the screen out. But I always look at it, if there's a fire, I ain't not worried about having to try to fix a screen. I'd rather just hear that you guys had to put your foot through the screen so you guys can try to get out of the coach if there was a fire, if you couldn't make your way to the door. All right. 
as we start to backtrack again, we're going to have our dinette area. You got the light here. This guy does break down into a bed by simply lifting up the bed or lifting up the table, pulling these legs out. They just lay on the floor. And then your table basically sits right here on each side of the bench. And then you take your top cushions here to fill in that void. Then you do also have storage underneath there as well. This guy here will also fold out into a bed as well. Basically, you're going to lift up on the front, pull your legs out, pull this guy forward, and sit so like so. And then this here will fold down. A lot of times people usually put the cushions there in the back to kind of help fill in that void. They just seem real nice and easy. We got our other light here. You do have storage up above here as well. Then we got our little desk area here. You got a couple of storage, you know, shelves there, our drawers, you got storage up above. You got your light here that has also got a USB hookup so you can hook it up and charge your phones. And there is also one right there on the side of the bed, or on the side of the couch, my apologies. Then we got the radio up here. So with our radio, so you have two speaker zones. Speaker zone one is outside speakers. Speaker zone two is inside. This guy, you can kind of preset your stations, but when you turn your battery disconnect off, it's just going to reset them anyways. Uh, you got your volume control. Uh, it is actually tied in to where you are able to also use the DVD feature of this guy. Um, just pretty much put it in, make sure it's hooked to your TV. I've noticed some of the TVs are no longer coming with these style cables. Nice thing is, is that you can either remove this panel right here to get to the back of it, or you pop this cover off. It's held in with two screws, and you can swap this out to an HDMI cable. All right, so down here is going to be where your TV antenna booster is that I was talking about outside. Right now, it's in the on position because the radio is tied, or the radio antenna is tied into this, so it needs that good signal strength. But if you're trying to scan for that campground cable, you have to turn it off by pushing that button. And then from there, you would go through channel search and make sure you choose cable and then scan for channels. If you had that satellite hookup, it hooks to the top. Uh, they already got the TV mount in here, which is nice. Uh, they did leave the hardware for that, and that's located right inside this top drawer. And then from there, we have basically made our way around the coach. Oh, right here. Uh, there is this sticker right here. It's the QR code. If you scan this guy, basically it'll take you to where you can put in the camper information and download a manual for this camper. All right, so from there, we have made our way to the door. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to call us. We do our best to answer those for you over the phone. Hopefully this was knowledgeable and informational for you guys. Thank you and have a wonderful day.